In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. How can God help us deal with difficult challenges of our lives? How can God help us deal with the difficult challenges of our lives? That's the question, that's the reflection question that I'm going to ask you to think about at the conclusion of this homily. Well, it's not hard to list some difficult challenges. I want to just list two. One is conflict. Conflict within families, conflict within churches, conflict among friends, conflict between nations. There's a lot of conflict. And there are ways to understand it or to deal with it. I mean, sometimes it's just a result of a misunderstanding or didn't quite hear what a person said and thought she said something else. Or maybe it's because of fear. Maybe the person is feeling very insecure because of who knows what, but um, was a little oversensitive. Or, or maybe there was just an honest difference of opinions. Who knows? And we, we do know that there are some ways that we can deal with conflict, um, active listening, that is listening in order to understand, rather than, than listening in order to wait until it's your time to talk back. Or making I statements, like uh, instead of saying, you made me feel lonely, to say, when you walked down the hallway and I was there standing alone, I felt lonely. You know, sort of claiming our feelings instead of pushing it on to somebody else. Um, sometimes we use counselors or mediators uh, to really help us work out conflict. There are a lot of things that we could do. There are a lot of things we could do. So what about this quote in today's gospel? Do you think that I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. That sounds like conflict. Jesus is coming to bring division among us. But you know what? He's really talking about division between the people who know God and the people who do not know God. He's really talking about it's time for us to tell the truth and if there is going to be division and conflict, so be it. Then comes the deal. How do we move out of that conflict? But Jesus was not in favor of simply peace for peace's, for peace's sake. He was in favor of not having conflict when it is hurtful. Another difficult challenge that all of us face to one degree or another is acknowledging reality. Um, it's a complicated world in which we live. It's hard to figure things out sometimes. There's so many factors floating around. Different perceptions, different spins on the different perceptions. Um, some of us would like to stay with the familiar because we know it. It's comfortable. Instead of maybe going deeper to discover something that is in fact the truth, the reality, and yet not so comfortable. Maybe there's hidden information that we just haven't discovered yet, which hinders us from really acknowledging the truth and the reality of what's going around us, going on around us. And so here's some things we can do in that case. Um, we can consult reliable resources. There might be people we know who really are even-handed, who can who can see both sides or who can really see beneath the surface but not stir things up, just provide that information. Um, we can do research, Google. I mean, there's lots of things we can do to sort of figure things out so that we understand it better. Um, having conversations in a group or something to try to, to try to understand what's going on around us. And so here comes that other quote from Luke. 
Jesus says, why do you not know how to interpret the present? You know how to interpret the weather, but why can't you understand what's going on, folks? You need to open your eyes. How can God help us deal with the difficult challenges of our lives? Well, this is clear that Jesus consistently said, presented this truth. We need the courage to recognize and name the truth that is out there. I mean, that's the prophetic voice of Jesus. We need the courage to recognize and name this is what's going on. And the other point, complementary point of Jesus over and over again is we need the compassion to care for each other. Like in the parable of the Good Samaritan, which is in this gospel according to Luke, as well as the readings from Luke, which you heard earlier, calling for opening of our eyes to the truth. How can God help us deal with the difficult challenges of our lives? That last part of the Hebrews reading, I think, is fantastic. I think it's two of the most important verses in the entire Bible. I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to talk about it. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, I've got to tell a story. So in the fall of 75, I was, yeah, in the fall of 75, I was a uh, senior at General Theological Seminary, the first Episcopal seminary. Um, and uh, it, was all Saints, it was All Saints Day, a big, a big deal. The chapel's sort of about this size, quite frankly. And uh, I was designated to be the thoroughfare. When I went to seminary, I didn't even know what a thoroughfare was, much a thoroughfare. But I figured out, and I got trained how to do it, and so as the gospel, the dean, the deacon and the gospel bearer were walking down and I was walking a part of the procession, you know, I was getting into it, you know. And I started saying, I'm going to do it around the world, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and smoke was coming. It was, it was smelling pretty good. It was smelling pretty good. It was going around and the gospel was read and all that stuff. And, and so the procession goes back, and, you know, so I, said, I got into it again. I did it around the world twice, you know. It was, it was really, you know, I don't know, it was a, it was a wonderful experience. It was a transformative experience. And I put the thurible away, and we all stood there as a preacher went up into the pulpit. And um, he was a um, liturgical professor, and he said... Um, he looked at me and then he said, uh, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, <laughs> and he even did this, you know. <laughs> so what a great statement, though. We right now are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Not to mention, well, not to mention those in Hebrews, which is stated, you know, those in, in, in the history of Hebrew scriptures. Um, in the history of Christianity. But think about this room right here, this sacred space. Look at the witnesses around us, people who gave these windows, people who have sat in these same seats, people who have come here at good times and bad times to learn about the faith, to share the faith. Um, they were witnessing to their decision to follow Jesus and to be a faithful Christian. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, being in the presence of witnesses, and every one of you 
could be a witness right at this moment. Being in the presence of witnesses is in fact something we can do. Actually, God is doing it to help us deal with the challenges of our lives. Not being alone, but being in the presence of people who know the faith and can share the faith and can help us grow in the faith. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. Another great line. Let us lay aside every weight. What are the burdens, you know? What are the burdens that you're carrying this day and beating you down and therefore not enabling you the freedom to really see what's going around you? to let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. For often it is a sin that we allow ourselves to be beaten down and burdened and overweighted. It's sort of a sin like maybe I can't handle it, maybe God isn't with me, maybe God won't lead me. That's a turning away from God, which is the definition of a sin. So let it, let it go. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Let us run with perseverance, with com commitment, knowing that there's a goal somewhere down there, that we can do it, that we can keep up the pace, that we're not alone, that it, the, the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, knowing that Jesus is the one who has gone ahead of us and prepared the way. Jesus is the one that could tell us where the next curve is coming or the, or the dip down. Um, knowing, knowing that it's Jesus who is running with us, persevering and moving towards that goal. Who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The joy, sort of an interesting statement there in connection with the crucifixion, but really referring to the fact that Jesus allowed himself to be crucified on the cross. Actually, not so much to save us from sin, but to incorporate the sin of the world into his body, into his being, embracing all that is evil and painful, so that there may be more joy in the presence of all of us as we walk in the steps of Jesus and move towards that goal of being at one with God. How can God help us deal with the difficult challenges of our lives. Basically, simply by being in our presence. If only we can open up our eyes, hearts, and minds, see and feel and recognize that yes, God is here and always will be with us, whether we are up or down, whether we have our eyes wide open or blinded by the light or choosing to turn away. God can help us deal with our difficulties anytime, if only we let God.
Amen.